Hi, um, morning guys. Uh, my name is Michelle and even though I was introduced as a software engineer at, at ISQ, um, today I'm representing uh, my own company called Mopus Works, where I am a project engineer slash um, still hardware, software, everything also do engineer. Uh, okay, for today I originally planned to do a talk on uh, design considerations when building software and hardware platforms slash products. Uh, pretty technical, but then I got a request to talk about something to attract the younger demographics especially. So I had to uh, come up with something, a new topic, kind of last minute, and had to get us something to show you guys for today. Um, if in any way any of you are inspired by what I'm presenting later on uh, to pick up some electronics, then that'd be great. Alright, so um, the title of my talk is Free Weekly. For those of you who get the inspiration in the title of this talk, great. Uh, for those who don't, don't worry. Uh, it just means that you're really young. You can take comfort in being very young to not understand this. Uh, I'm not sure what the youngest age is in the audience today. We had some pretty young ones last year. Uh, but you may wish to know that the contents of this talk is rated PG-13 for some scenes of violence towards an inanimate figurine. Uh, today, I'll be sharing a little about how anybody with um, some software, I, I know a lot of you guys are mostly software people, uh, but not to worry, I'll be introducing a bit of uh, if you can pick up a little hardware source, it's actually very doable to hack and mod uh, iconic figurines such as our victim today, which is Wheatley. More on him later. Um, iconic figurines are something actually... Well, iconic figurines and replicas actually from classic uh, movies and games are great for hacking because you can actually find manufacturers and like, they're officially licensed collectibles and they actually put them out in, in the market for you to just buy off the shelf and they look great uh, anyway. So because they're iconic, sometimes you, most of the time when you see them in the shelves, even in Toys R Us or even in those game games like game places like Simply Toys, uh, they will come in either very small um, sizes or even up to life sizes one for those collector's items. Well, I'm not interested in collecting them, and I find that the small ones are way cuter anyway. Uh, and also, they don't have the price tag of uh, a collector's item. So I won't feel so bad, I mean, knowing I'm going to hack it, I won't feel so bad if I accidentally screw things up and cut things that I am not supposed to cut. Like, like, so I really, really cut, cut them up. Like, oh shit, it's like, I missed this part. So, um, it doesn't come to, to a surprise that when I saw that Think Geek had this particular Wii keychain, um, I got understandably excited. No, no, not because it's the officially licensed collectible by Valve and Think Geek. Uh, but rather, my first thought was uh, no, 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 cancel that. That's not very ladylike to speak of. Uh, the first thought should be, can I hack it there? Much, much better. Uh, and that's a, can I hack it? That's a very good question, actually. Because there are actually a few things that I look out for when I decide if an item is hackable before I actually purchase it. Uh, the first and foremost is being its size. So this is actually where I can work out if there's any decent amount of space for me to put um, stuff in it, like electronics. Followed by material. Now in this case, Wheatley is made um, by the standard plastic toys um, that are sold everywhere. So I know that if a simple cutter, I can just work my way around without needing too much like a drill or, or, or like a Dremel machine, uh, which most people will probably not have lying around. Um, and then finally, if any, inbuilt functions. So this is actually a very good for me to give a good gauge for me to actually know okay, what can be kept and what can be discarded. Uh, in, this, in the case of Wheatley, 
Um, you can pretty much guess from the title that since it's an LED keychain, then it will be the, the standard uh, connect LED to switch to battery, the stuff that we learned in primary school. So that's something that everybody would understand. Uh, and when, when I mean hack, part of it actually means adding stuff like electronics inside. Emphasis on the word adding. Now, so when I saw this image, uh, I got a little worried. That looks like a really tricky size to work with. Uh, it was definitely small. This was the only picture I had um, given to me from the website. Now I need some complete facts. Now, if I were to actually fit electronics into something that small, and I didn't know exactly how big it was, I mean, who could tell from a guy's hand? I, I mean, I have really small hands for a female. Like, one of those, like, is your wrist going to break at any moment? Yeah, I grew up like, having small, small structures. So I needed to know exactly how big this was. So the engineer side of me started to look for some technical specifications. Uh, nothing much really, but just really to know some size. And what do you know? There was no mention of it. Not on a product page. I went to Amazon even. They had the dimensions of the packaging, but not of Wheatley itself. So I think, oh great. Uh, I might not be able to fit it in. I don't know if I can fit it in. So by this time, I ought to mention that there's one thing more that I like when working with small replica figurines is it comes with the challenge of making things small. So I took that up and three weeks later, gosh, it was slow. Three weeks later, um, Wheatley arrived. Now, before I go into what was done with Wheatley, and actually have him on hand at the moment, it's actually this small. It's, it's very, very small. I mean, I know it looks small even with my small hands. <laughs> Uh, now, but before I go into what was just done, it's best to understand him a bit more. I'm assuming that some of you probably played Portal 2, or even if you've not played it, you've heard of it, but you might not necessarily know who Wheatley is. Um, but if all you've seen in front of me is, oh, okay, it's that ball like character thing that she's been calling Wheatley. But that ball like character is actually an AI personality call. Um, from the game Portal 2 by Valve. And Wheatley was designed to be, and I quote, the dumbest moron who ever lived. And he's one of those characters who delivers the darndest lines and that make him so memorable and iconic. Um, right, uh, so I'm gonna show you guys a little short video, which I call the best of Whitley. I'm not sure, okay, so I'm just volume up. God, you look good, looking good actually. Are you okay? Are, are you, well, don't answer that. I'm absolutely sure you're fine. And it's not out of the question that you might have a very minor case of serious brain damage. But don't be alarmed, all right? Uh, although if you, do, if you do feel alarmed, try to hold on to that feeling because that is the proper reaction to being told that you've got brain damage. They told me never, never, ever to disengage myself from my management rail or I would die. But we're out of options here. So get ready to catch me, all right, on the off chance that I'm not dead the moment I pop off this thing. On three. Ready? One. Two. Three! That's high. It's, it's too high, isn't it, really, that? All right, going on three just gives you too much time to think about it. Let's uh, go on one this time. Okay, ready? One. Catch me, catch me! Ow! <laughs> Ow. I am not dead. I'm not dead! <laughs> yeah, I hope you enjoyed that. Yeah, so th this is exactly the kind of character we're working with. Uh, so that was Wheatley, and now on to the heck. Uh, we'll start with the brains first. And 
The brains of the platform for the hardware I'll be introducing today is, uh, of course, the microcontroller board. Now, for microcontroller boards, the, the first thing, even if you're not into hardware, you would have heard of um, Arduino or Arduino compatible boards. Uh, this would be the board of choice that we'll be taking, uh, because it, mostly because it wins by popular vote and there is uh, the compatible ones come in various sizes, shapes even, and uh, it holds a variety of different kinds of chips that we can work around with if we need to leverage more later on. Now, in the case of Wheatley, the first thing you notice uh, about him is how much he talks. He talks a lot. He's, he will talk the entire game show. He will talk his mouth out if he can. Uh, in, and he has talked a lot in his British accent, and it's a, it's, it's a huge deal, the British accent thing. Um, so to do that, we're gonna, so it just means that we will definitely have to give uh, this guy, who at the moment just does this, Wheatley does not just turn on LED light. So we're going to give him ability to speak. Now in order to do that, we need an audio board. We definitely need an audio board. Um, a micro SD card board support so we can take files and put it in. Um, these files are actually really available on the internet. And then, as if that's not enough because people at my workplace are always ambitious, uh, it comes to the question of what and how to trigger the things that he says. I mean, this guy can, this guy can really talk and uh, Depending on what you do or do not do in the game, he's got different. He's got uh, quite a few sets of lines that he will say, and the fun part is actually in me trying to recreate a lot of that. Um, to do that, aside from the audio file that we're definitely going to add in, triggering. One of the methods I'm actually thinking of triggering him and the sound files is the use of an IMU sensor. Now, an IMU sensor is uh, an initial measurement unit. It is like pitch roll, yaw, and accelerometer combined. So what it does is that you can actually pick up stuff. And you, you will know when you leave him, for example, on the table, and you don't you just leave him alone. And he will start to say things, in the, of course, in the game itself. It's not going to stand, so I'm just going to leave it here. It's in the game itself, he will say things like, uh, have crazy lines. Like, if he's on the floor, because after he disengages himself from the power rail, he's on the floor, he can't, he can't move without the help of the, dis of the, of the management rail. So he'll say things like, I spy with my eyes something that that uh, F. Floor. Waiting on the floor, wait, I'm on the floor waiting for you to pick me up. So if you just like leave him there, like you just don't do anything, you freeze to do anything, he'll start saying things like, I now spy something with the letter A. Now you start, I know when I say F and A straight away, you guys might probably think there's something nasty coming on in your mind. I bet he purposely does that on purpose, but then he'll start saying things like, also the floor, still waiting, always waiting for you to pick me up. So with that, I could actually implement an IU because if I don't touch it, there's nothing on the sensor. But if I pick it up, I can actually trigger voice files to be said. So that's one more thing to be added in to the entire electronic setup. And then special effects. Now because Wheatley, um, the only thing that comes to Wheatley is his eye, um, which is a blue LED that was pretty boring in itself. So I actually hacked that and replaced that with an RGB LED module. Uh, you have seen some of this on Adafruit. Now, one of the reasons for that is that I could change the shades of color. And another main reason was that along with the spoken words that were going to come out with the voice files, I could actually grab some of the lines, the signals, and then feed that to merge that together with the pulse width modulation in the RGB itself. So when he's actually speaking, you can see with the voice lines are being set and you hear him, you can actually see the lights, the pulsing with as he speaks. So it's a lot more lifelike. So, there. Yet another thing, an RGB LED module to be added to the electronic setup. Um, there is also a serious case of ambitiousness where we actually 
part of the game has a thing called a portal gun. So as with all portal guns, we've only implemented an electronic system. Uh, one of the ways, and the most standard way of doing that is through an IR LED. So I put all in an IR receiver module. Now by this time, say, like, wow, you've gone on and on. There's quite, there's quite a lot of things that you're going to put inside this thing here. And it does sound a lot if, if you know about the size of standard Arduino board and, and development kits out there. I mean, how can you fit all that inside here? This is a total list of uh, the eight things that I'm going to put in. Very ambitious, very impressive. Uh, now, the electronics, if you think about one thing about the electronics is that when you think about Arduino and Arduino compatible boards, now if even an enclosure that you want to buy off the shelf is large, uh, an enclosure is large, there's lots of space for you to deal with, then there's no issue, there's no problem at all with any of the hardware choices that you can choose. There's lots of hardware choices you can choose because space is not an issue. You can just pick any, um, if it's very big, you can just pick the Arduino board, with the Arduino Uno even, to fit all this in. But when you're dealing with something with a closure, and you can't exactly choose because the whatever choice you have is the choice that the manufacturer gives to you and that is on the shelf and that you're buying. This is a choice that you don't have unless you're prepared to actually make all these by yourself from scratch. Uh, so based on the size alone, and I did mention that one of the main things that was very important when hacking was the size, and also because of the hardware, hardware uh, platform. If you have any idea of the PCBs and uh, the development kits that are available, straight away at this moment, you would be able to cancel out quite a lot of it based on the size alone. Like lots of things are just out of the question. There's no way you can actually fit any of that in. And then comes, okay, so now okay, maybe, maybe I know, perhaps, uh, and, Arduino Micro Pro will fit in because that's one of the smaller things that you would think of. Uh, that may be so, although I can tell you right now it doesn't fit. Even that is too big by, by quite a bit. But how are you going to settle, how are you going to fit in an audio board and a micro SD board at the same time? The, uh, the Pro Micro actually comes with uh, pinouts and they're very, very good for multi uh, like the Pro Micro from SparkFun. But when you actually think of, you want to add in audio and have a micro SD at the same time, then you start thinking, okay, bandwidth issues and space. It, those micro uh, Pro Minis, they don't, they're actually meant to fit on a breadboard. So you know, there's a certain amount of space there. But they're not, they don't actually have anything to fit. There's no shield that is nicely in that, that same dimension that gives you the audio. Uh, and micro SD capabilities. So, um, not to mention, we will then continue to add an RGB LED module. If you work with RGB LED modules, you will know that the, the latest ones released by Adafruit and uh, especially by China uh, is that you need lots of bandwidth for it. The timing has to be accurate to get the proper color that you want. And then, not only that, then I wanted to put in, be ambitious and put in something like an RR receiver module. So, I, I have to do a full disclosure now that for today, and it wasn't planned that this could actually fit, but for the past year or so, um, I've been working on a development kit which is Arduino compatible, a 32-bit Arduino compatible. And the whole thing that I mentioned here is actually this. Uh, what we have here, this would be your RGB LED module. Uh, initially, Adafruit sold this as NeoPixels, but she direct from the China, from of a China manufacturer. We have the IR receiver module, and of course, most importantly, the Arduino compatible board itself is this big now. Keep in mind, and remember that I said I have small hands and small thumbs. This is my thumb, all right? And this, if you can see, is the Arduino board. It's way smaller. 32-bit, you can program it, um, it's Arduino compatible. 
and then to actually fit uh, at the back, I did say there was an IMU sensor. It's right here. We can see the stem size here. I'm just going to cover up with my finger to show you exactly where it is. It's this. It's in between my finger. This is the 6 DOF IMU I was talking about. Uh, and then comes the audio and micro SD board. Micro SD because obviously that's the smallest and easiest thing that you can work with that can hold wave files. Just one moment. So, micro SD, check. Audio, check. These are really good AAC speakers, handphones, used in handphones. It is the same, we got it to be the same size um, as the board itself, but according to the design rules. And if you actually place all this together, via the board to board. There you go. Now, one another would think is, uh, okay, great, so we got all these small size stuff, but you know, open up Wheatley. Can we make sure it fits? So what exactly is Wheatley Wheatley? Now, this is the part where I, uh, where I'm gonna show you, this is a PG-13 warning. These are gonna be pretty violent stuff. We're gonna disassemble Wheatley. So, on his body, as you would see, is a screwdriver. We are going to screw, uh, uh, unscrew his screws. Like, just poke him right there, prod him there. <laughs> so, you can take it out, and you would actually see next to the batteries, and no, we can't reuse the batteries. Uh, the low impedance makes a difference, they cannot give enough power for these things. Uh, you would actually see the simple circuit that we guessed was there, which is the LED, the battery power socket, and the switch. Now we need to make space. So here's our trusty cutter. Now I did tell you, this was, this, this was meant for people who do not have a jewel. You should, you, I, it's very unlikely that you would have a jewel lying around or you have a dremel, you know, like a knife can just cut it off. If you do, that's great, you will save lots of trouble and, uh, but you guys are mostly guys, so you have lots of strength. This is no problem for you to handle. The plastic's okay. You can actually cut, this is, okay, what you see on your top left is the eye. We are going to have to cut that column out to fit the RGB LED. And then the other side of Wheatley, um, you can probably tell it opens up like this. We need more space. So the columns will have to go by half. Now we can actually reuse the switch, but if you go out to the booth outside later on, we will show you step by step where we actually reuse the switch. Uh, it is possible um, if we use a battery that's this size, but for today, we wanted to make it last a little longer, so we got we upgraded to a battery of this size, so we had to cut out even more stuff. And you should end up with uh, a casing looking like this. Plenty of space to walk around with. Uh, completely flat. The battery compartment, you can see on the left, is completely gone. You can trim that down even more nicely with the cutter. And it fits. Okay, the other side of this, which is being covered right now, that's where the speaker is. We're using the lid, we're reusing the lid of the cover, and that's where your, the battery actually was. We're reusing the lid as a kind of a diaphragm for the speaker to make it sound better. Because handful speakers are very, very small. They have very good for high frequencies, but you can't really hear, it becomes a lot louder when you actually have a diaphragm or a lid over it that you can actually vibrate on. And the lid is actually pretty thin, so we found that it works quite well. So we just covered that back on and you don't really see the speaker like in the center right there. And if you take a look at uh, the third photo, which is on your right, you would notice this is everything stacked up and that's only half of the ball. Half of Wheatley. 
This is the size. So which means at this height, there's still plenty of space for it to maneuver and do things. Now, it fits. So now what? This is now, now we're going to go on to the software side. And you can easily do a Google search for, but the one thing great about games is that you, it, somebody would have done an extraction of the, the sound lines. And you can see even, this is great because it, they actually have different chapters where you can actually say, okay, this chapter we could to implement, this is, this, I could definitely implement some of these uh, sections. And then you can read, you can going to choose some of these sound files, download it, and put it into my micro SD. Now, um, if you would notice something about games is that when they, or games, it comes in WAV files. They are not MP3, but WAV files. Uh, which means they are uncompressed, and this is also very good for microcontrollers. And depending on the microcontroller platform that you get, and your audio circuit that you get, uh, it, is very it is very likely that you have to pay close attention to the kind of codex it supports. Uh, in order to get something down to the size that I told you about, one of the pins has to act as a pulse wave condition. Is it PWM? It's going to go through filter um, and then an amplifier to support the speaker. So we need something that the microcontroller can drive itself. So for this guy, we call a tweak tweak. It's you need to make it 16 kilohertz, 16 bit in mono. Uh, not too much to do because when I got the files, they were already in mono, but I needed to just change. Uh, the sample format to 16 kilohertz and save it as a 16-bit PCM WAV file. And that's all I had to do. I'm not going to go through the source code because that would be a tutorial in itself. But I'm going to tell you well, some of the tools and IDEs that you can actually use to program this that are available. Uh, all these have tons of libraries the source code will be up, we'll be releasing them anyway. Um, and you, the two cases, since I did say this, are really compatible. But you notice something different about the, the IDE. You would be familiar with the blue ones. This is a red one because it's done by, uh, it's actually by Digilin. Uh, and we call it Chip Kit. So it looks exactly the same as an Arduino IDE compiler. It works with existing sketches, existing libraries, no issues there. But if, I know some of you guys are the more hardcore programmers here, you might really prefer an MP lab. This gives you full control. But for those of you who are not very familiar with um, hardware itself, and you just, you like the idea of hacking weekly, or you like the idea of even hacking um, one of the more common ones, Star Wars figurines, like Darth Vader, Stormtrooper, like the ones in, in the alarm clock. And then you got people on Amazon complaining, why is it beeping? It's supposed to play some majestic background music, like na 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 to wake me up. But it's not, it beeps. So there were some people like, very disappointing. It does not play um, Star Wars music. So that is definitely one of the things that you can easily hack. Um, Inbuilt features, you can keep like alarm clock systems. You can see get the trigger to play uh, the sound files. Uh, but for people, for people like you who like to do this kind of thing, and you don't worry too much about, okay, this is a 16-bit, 32-bit, how much memory do I have? Do I need to optimize this? Can I, do I have enough bandwidth to do this? And if you have worked with uh, mobile programming, even like Android or iOS, you will actually notice one thing that is very, very good about it is that it is actually hardware independent. It does not care which sensor, for example, your accelerometer, the, the handphone manufacturer actually uses. The API just releases it as uh, accelerometer dot X, Y, and Z. It doesn't matter, okay, you do need, this is by Bosch, this is by S, by ST, or this is by Texas Instruments. Nexus instrument. <laughs> right. Inside joke. So this is one of, the, one of the things that we can we are actually trying to do as we write uh, we write the compiler as well. And that's called the Allegro IDE. Uh, it is free, it's in beta. You can write in Visual Basic, a subset of VisualBasic.net. 
and it supports inline assembly as well. Uh, full technical, full code is given. The only thing you need to worry about is if you want to get data, it is as simple as for IMU, RT, IMU dot accelerometer.x or Y or Z. If it's an RTC, you shouldn't care what RTCs you have on board. It will still be RTC dot time for real time clock. So, Allegro ID is definitely one of the things that uh, is really, really good for people who even get started into hardware. And then if you do want to look, go more and deeper inside, uh, the source code is available. You just click on the tab to see what the source code is. So I will be introducing Quibi Reborn with uh, a personality. Uh, it's kind of soft, but you can actually hear it's actually playing sound and sound files. If I leave it just like that, just let me cover him back up. You can probably tell he's, he's just been yakking on and on and on and on, like non-stop. Okay. <laughs> it's annoying. After a while, if you leave this with your friend of yours, it annoy the hell out of him. This is really good for like, you know, guys in engineering school, and you just put it and then say, oh, cool. What's this? It's weekly, and then say, can I have it? Wing play with it for a while, and then after all, oh, it's like just get this guy away from me. He's annoying. So if if you don't you just leave him alone for five minutes, it, it, it will go. Hi, um, hello. Few seconds later, hi. You there? Uh, anybody there? Uh, no. And then if you pick it up, see, just goes on. He just goes yelling and all. Yeah. So um, you can actually. I do encourage you, if you're interested in this, uh, come outside, with a booth just outside the door, uh, play around with it, mess around with it, try and hear what he's trying to say, and yeah, that's it. Thank you very much for listening. Any questions? Oh, you could ask me later. Any questions for Michelle? Hi, uh, so thanks Michelle. Uh, do we have any questions from the audience? Oh, by the way, uh, if any of you are wondering, oh, but I've never seen or heard Tweet Tweet before. Uh, no, you haven't. We just made it. It's going on Kickstarter soon, uh, so you can support us and get it as well from there soon. Yeah, thank you very much. Thanks Michelle.